Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ed's Taking on Dignitas, our best of three, our final one for the night here on the EU road to Rio. The pistol is already live as Dignitas make it straight on down through the vents to the B bomb site, and in a blink of an eye, Dean, they're planting. Very quickly indeed, only taking a small bit of damage as well for their efforts, at least until this point where Sunny does come through with one headshot on Forest, and Alu doesn't care, he's just charged straight out onto the bomb site. And Dignitas are struggling now. They've already lost a couple players. They're still trying to get those players down in position to actually be able to play off of this bomb. But they start pulling it back. Exist gets two. Get right with one as well before he falls. And now they have the position to play this two on two. The bomb though being tapped. Both players holding that single door. And now it's on Freiburg. Taps away the force with the P250. Still just trying to play the time. Not sure if Alu is sticking out or not. But will now realize that was not the case. And despite the kill coming in there from Alu, he doesn't have time to get the defuse through, so he is going to have to just back off. And Dignitas, they find that opening pistol round. A big find for them. This is, um, of course, going to be their map choice coming in. We then have... Mm -hmm. I need to double check. I need to look back. Train up next. Train up, yeah. And an overpass if needed as the cider, I believe. We were chatting about the way this VO went down. We were saying that, in theory, this is actually really strong for Dignitas, at least here on Nuke, of course, on the opening map. We do think they have a really good opportunity. Ents have been struggling on it. Going on to train, they might have a tough time, but Overpass is, again, a map where we would look at Dignitas as potentially even being favorites on that one. So I'm excited for this matchup, and it's already started off extremely strong with that pistol round being very hectic and very close as well. Force play, though, will be coming straight back in, as you'd expect, but Alu already tagged up there by the scout of Halter. That nade through didn't quite light up Halzer to the point that he can be taken down by the scout, but it doesn't make a difference as far as quickly taps away at Alu and Dignitas. Two-man advantage now moving into the most important round really outside of the pistol. If you find this, you're guaranteed your opponents are going to eco with the way that Ents have invested. They're looking for aggression in towards main, but it looks like Dignitas aren't interested in holding that part of the map. They've made their way through outside. Heaven and Ramp. Well, ramp is theirs, heaven not just yet. I'll be looking for that in just a moment. Dignitas are in a very good spot. Like you were saying, Dean, with how the veto went down. So you do want Ents to put up a good fight. In all honesty, Nuke looks, obviously being Dignitas' map pick, fairly convincing in their favor. But when you move to train, I would give Dignitas at least a semi-okay chance of taking it. Not to put numbers on it. But I definitely think if one of these teams is going to take the opponent's map pick, it probably is Dignitas. And then moving down even to that decider of overpass, again, Dignitas have that little bit of an edge based on the game we saw versus Fnatic. You know, they're very, very capable on it. The, the most recent one, not the one before. We'll, we'll ignore that. So for Ents, they really do want to take Nuke if they can, as always. But uh, with a 2-0 lead likely to turn into 3-0, Dignitas are in a nice spot. Ents have to take an ego. Yeah, not expecting much in this round. One thing worth noting is obviously these two teams did play yesterday in a best of one where we seen them on Dust 2 and it was Ents who got the victory. Not having that come out here in this matchup. I'll, I'll resume that in a moment because there is a chance for these pistols to actually get something oh. done. Alu gets a double. Ariel with one as well. I mean, winning the round is still going to be tough, but at least they have made this very, very costly to the economy of Dignitas. But yeah, my point was going to be, of course, Dust 2 not coming out in this matchup. Not too surprisingly that they don't have it come out. Uh, maybe if it was to, to be in play, it would have been a decider. But we've seen Dignitas actually remove it, I believe, in the second stage of the ban. So it was, in theory, there as an option for a pick, but more of a middle ground. So not too surprising. But a pause coming in from Dignitas. It is a tactical. I, I guess realizing that that round was a lot closer than they would have liked. The USBs have been crazy throughout this tournament, man. Yeah, Do people even need to buy weapons? Just Ecos in general have been nuts, but it was well handled by Ents lobbing the nade out to do a little bit of damage. Although it didn't connect much, the fact that they were able to close in the distance onto Halzerk, who had the scout, take him down even despite being watched by the Galil. I mean, overall, the way Dignitas handled that round wasn't poor, just amazing shots hit by Alu on that USP to light up both of those players and take them down. And they do get a huge reward for it, like we're saying. You know, Dignitas, look at their money. Forest, Hauser, no cash left. They bought up the AWP, and they're still coming in with a MAC-10. So things are definitely better than usual when you're down 3-0, to zero, especially considering that second round didn't go all too close in the end, you know? Let's start this out by outside aggression coming through from Alu. He's going to go back up for more. And they almost line up for him, but the nades, a barrage comes through. I hope Alu is uh, 
Hasn't been playing too much against Rays because he'll be getting flashbacks. Yeah, I mean, there really wasn't anything he could do right there. I think the first one kind of caught him in position as well and slowed him down. So, a bit unfortunate. As you said, a bit risky on the, the peak there. And especially on attempting to maybe try and even re-peak it. But yeah, for now, it is still just a four on four. Obviously, knowing that they've lost this control down towards secret, not really sure if this is where the commitment will come in. So for the moment, they haven't really rotated much down. Only that one player, I believe, being in position to actually try and hold it being X7. So he could have a very tough time. And you see right now the upper hold with the single door already open. Looking to peer in. I think the barrel may have just been spotted right there. So yeah, X7, Peach True. Actually haven't jumped up, though, onto uh, something on the back of the wall there. He wasn't spotted. So now the push begins to come in. Except X7 goes straight down to exist. Get right with one as well, and immediately the save is called for. I mean, they took a while to commit, so it did allow for Sunny to come down to help, but he wasn't really able to. Immediately domed, and yeah, Sergey and Ariel backing away towards the spawn. It's going to be a 4-0 lead already here for Dignitas on the T side. With the saves, they'll be able to drop two rifles, but there'd still be one player looking at a weaker buy. I would imagine they will go for it, but it's a, it's a tough spot to be in this early on. And absolutely is, you know, giving the T-side such a strong start is not where you want to be. And so at least with the two rifles saved over, they might be able to say something about the next round, but allowing Dignitas to survive with four is huge. At that point, they'll be able to rock on through to the next with a pretty comfortable buy, obviously, just reinvesting into utility on most players and then build that buffer from maybe two to three rounds that they can lose before they're forced down to an eco or even a weaker buy. Considering the fact that Ents normally couldn't get a buyout, but with the two rifles saved, Ariel and Sergei could drop M4s. But we actually see Deagles being bought up around them, so evidently they're not going to go in for it. Utility was low as well, so it, it does make sense to an extent. If Ariel and Sergei were to drop M4s, they couldn't have bought up any more for their utility belt, but at the same time, they really do need to make a, or get an answer back for Dignitas pretty damn soon. And unfortunately, with that previous round having four players surviving for Dignitas, the damage that they've done in that one before with the USP is has been kind of neutralized because Dignitas have been good again to stabilize that economy, taking it now towards outside, already picking up that opening kill as Halzerk and Freiburg actually combining onto X7 to make sure he definitely wasn't surviving. Slowly moving down, actually spots the leg, I believe. Sunny himself was trying to use that smoke as a little bit of a one-way. Alu not expected to be still up close. Let's catch one off guard. Ariel decides he wants to go through that main smoke, and suddenly this round has become again a little bit troublesome for Dignitas. And there it is, Alu even stealing away and up. All onto Exist and Get right now to try and save the day. Exist has covered some ground by walking out onto the A-bomb site. But a good bit of time is still needed for that bomb to be retrieved there by Get right and... I mean, it's not going to be really given to Dignitas. Sergei just goes forward alongside that flash, and Exist was as blind as he could possibly be. Oh, yeah, don't give him round. chances. Okay. Alu hits the shot, but that was a little bit risky. The round they so desperately needed as well. A 3k for Alu. And without that, Lens could have been trailing behind. At least with five rounds on the board, Dignitas could have been laughing all the way to the bank. They'd be so happy with such a good early start to their offense. But now Ents get on the board and they salvage an op. They manage to pull through a lot of weapons as well. There's a lot of pressure on Dignitas because we're seeing them having to spend a lot of that bank. What we were talking about with them having two to three rounds of a buffer kind of relied on them taking the previous. Now the straight blitz down through the vents has already come through as Dignitas look to set up to move down through outside. But they've lost Get Right and Hauser. Only players left alive are the man planting and the two setting up outside smokes. Exist is all alone. If they can get down there, they've seen the two smokes on outside. Ents know there can only be one player on B. Exist has to survive, and as far as takes down Sunny, Exist takes a fight, a risky one, and stops spraying just as Ariel peaks. Luckily, though, down in secret already is Freiburg ready to save the day, but he smoked out the Molly as well. This is not ideal. He's got to swing into it. X7 sticking the bomb, and he's got it. Oh, Dignitas. Exist got down and it's great that he planted the bomb, but to lose both Get Right and Hauser just threw the round into jeopardy immediately. A little bit awkward by Exist on that spray as well. Definitely could have composed himself a little bit more. As, as you said, just as he stopped spraying was when the peak came in. He eventually did realize, all right, I need to try and reset the spray, but then followed up on with a peak. He wasn't able to actually do so in time, so it was a little bit awkward. But yeah, I mean, once that, 
once that, as you said, frag was found and exists, once they got on towards the bomb site right there, the molly went in as long as the smoke on the bomb itself, so there really wasn't much that they could do about stopping that defuse. Coming back into this round, though, it is still a relatively strong buy, obviously, for Dignitas. They were able to save over the couple of weapons as well, make it a little bit easier for themselves. But if they were to lose this one, that's when the economy does begin to become a little bit of a problem, at least onto a couple of the players. So this one is very crucial for both teams right now. And Sergei, up close and hunt, may find contact quite soon. Has Sony on the bomb site as well who can help him right now. So there is that. Freiburg actually coming around. Mayen has gone ahead and find the open and not going to be committing in. Actually fallen back now that they've been able to find that one. And with that, beginning to actually move on towards the A-bomb site. Coming out Dardo, Sunny finds two. Unfortunately, Sergei in towards the hut doesn't find the same success, so he will go down. And although Ariel is in quickly to help out, it is not quite quick enough. X7 now left in the one-on-one. -on -one. It's a quick headshot towards Freiburg indeed, and he doesn't let Exist set himself up at all. I mean, the bomb was out in the open, so he probably could have played that a little bit safer, but he didn't care. Swings in, gets his actually second kill of both the round and the game right there. Did I lag a little bit there? Because my Go TV did at one point while I was casting. No, I think you're all good. I haven't had any tech issues this map, and now we've jinxed it. Must have been just my ping to the actual Go TV for a moment, maybe. I was hoping my voice didn't go all robotic like it does sometimes when it <laughs> messes up. I don't know what you mean. So no, it's all, it's all good. That was I a horrible first thing. Well, robot. listen, sorry, my voice is, is not analog. Oh, wait. Is it? I don't know. Who knows? Some people do. No roast me. Four to three. And it's doing well. Like they're not all geniuses. <laughs> exactly. You gotta keep building up the rounds here over towards that CT side. If their economy isn't, you know, home free just yet. And if Dignitas managed to pull off this mixed up buy, well, Ants will be right back in the gutter. Nice peek by Sunny. The timing on that. Ends up getting blind afterwards. I think by his teammates flash, but it just doesn't matter. X7 couldn't see a thing. And he's spamming him through a box. Sergey, not so lucky, but the kills are already looking pretty damn good for the CT side to close it out. As Exist falls and Forrest just needs to be sneezed on. The Chew says X7 as it goes 4-4 four to four, tied up. The T side now got to take an eco. Yeah, I don't think Dignitas are going to be incredibly scared just because they already have four rounds here on the T side. Obviously, four in a row now for Ents as well. They've begun to take back some control, but being on the T side, Dignitas, if they grind out two or three more rounds in total throughout this half, then they'll still feel pretty comfortable. But they're willing to call the pause in right now. Kind of surprising considering we're only going to see maybe pistols and cavalry here they do at least have full loss bonus so maybe trying to find out okay how much exactly can we buy and make sure we still have enough to do whatever we want to do in this next round to get out whatever nades and such we need behind it so that may be what they're talking about and obviously they know the last couple rounds apart from that previous one where they survived before the ones before that it was one surviving for ends two and then three in the one before that so they obviously know the economy really isn't in that great of a position so if they can get at least a couple kills out of this round and then come back in the next one and win out their gun round they could still keep ends in a position where maybe they could be even be looking at an eco obviously ends wouldn't be able to afford that so that's one thing we do need to mention. This round is a necessity for them to pick up cleanly. Having Sunny on the MP9 as well, you'd like if he's able to actually build up some bank with it. And off we go, actually, in towards inner at the moment. Nade down to the door, and Dig going to be running out very quickly to get down through vents. They've had no problem doing it so far. The molly always extinguished by that smoke, but Sunny this time in position, ready for this kind of a play, but he misses. The movement pulls him out of range of the doorway at the start, and Halsark now got a molly, or got the bomb, excuse me, that he can pop. The molly was on its way, is what I was going for. As Halsark gets taken down, they've got a bomb plant, already a pretty successful round. Only killing an SMG, though. If they can manage to drop one of these rifles, I think that's when you take it into a much more successful one. The retake underway for Ents. The player observation room hasn't been spotted yet, so a chance for Get Right to pounce, and he gets one with the Tech 9. It's actually workable at this point. Cock coming down the vents. Sergey's fallen. What is happening here, Dean? The pistols, the rush down vents, and all of a sudden, a team flash as well. X7 is 6 HP. It's time to save. Get out of there. Uh oh. Okay, I, I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're thinking about what damage they can do, but no, they go ahead and just take the round. That is upsetting, friends. As I said, they really hadn't built up much money. They would have had enough to reinvest. Saving these two weapons helps them out a bit by ensuring that they're not really going to have any weaknesses. But they're going to be putting everything back into this. If they lose this round, at that point, Dignitas very likely finds seven with the opportunity to still add quite a bit more to that. So, Ents, they need to bounce back immediately now off of losing that round. And... Oh, it's just kind of heartbreaking. I mean, it was just pistols and Kevlar.
Yeah, everything went wrong for them there, Dean. I mean, the, the fact that they're able to just rush that, and it's not like it's the first time. They've done that before. They've went down the vents. Sonny was in a great position, though. You can see that Ants were trying to be proactive, but even still getting cut off. Talking to Sonny, catching off the T side. He jumps up above for two. The 180 is good, and he's out of there. They're going to fade through the smoke at just the right time, though. Unlucky for Sonny, but still a great start for Ants with a man advantage to play with now. I was going to say they probably will be pretty happy with that, but Sergey is still willing to fight towards outside. A little bit risky. Even sticks around after dropping the up. Wanted to fight up against Exist as well, but eventually will back away. No trade to be returned there for Dignitas, so now they're just left in a two on four. Get right's actually lurking around the door, hoping maybe someone will give a chance for him to find an opening. The bomb being towards outside in the hands of Exist. I mean, they may just look to try and split in towards A. Obviously, Existo has to be careful because considering they did show this presence towards outside and it was only really Sergei who was fighting from passive, there could be a chance someone may have rotated down around through secret, which there is aerial. He's just not really getting aggressive off the back of it. I believe right now we're seeing someone pushed up towards ramp as well. Now, Alu just holding it with the AWP, not really going to push in. So yeah, no real opportunities being given here to the remaining players for Dignitas. That's what they were hoping for. Maybe a mistake to be made. So eventually, they are forced to just move forward on towards the a bomb site. And immediately, Exist goes down. Get right had a bit of a chance to try and get one kill there, but it doesn't happen in the end. Sergei is able to come out on top of it. 5-5, five to five, Ents are able to return and bounce back off, uh, off of losing that round up against the Pistols and Cavalier and redeem themselves a little bit. But there is still decent money here for a few of the Dignitas players. I don't think they're going to invest everything with the loss bonus in the next round being, well, they'll get 2,900 from this one. They can spend some of that extra money at least. You see two rifles coming out, maybe some pistols then on the other players. Mm -hmm. So they, again, can keep trying to put in some damage and who knows, maybe even steal on the round away. But that's not going to be the main focus of it. They just know that they're able to keep the pressure on before they come back into the full buy in the next. Oh, and again... Play around the smoke outside. Yeah, Sunny this time is going to actually end up going down without being able to find anything. Freiberg barely survives, so I think he's going to give that AK preferably to Getray, who has Kevlar. But Exist is going to take it for now. Forrest actually dropping off a silo, going to be able to find Alu as well. Oh no, not again. Well, a whiffed smoke later. It still doesn't matter for Dignitas that much. They've got themselves the two man advantage. But at the same time, no more smokes. On the back of them, investing so, so little. It's their only smoke miss. They don't think no they right Oh, man. A free kill. And Dignitas now, miles ahead. Get right's cut off. Throwing that flash cost him his life, but he still does a lot of damage to Sergey. And ends in an almost unrecoverable position, but hold on. Take a look at Dignitas. They're looking at coming in towards this bomb site where both players are, or at least Sergey can be quite quickly. Ariel had to pick one angle, but he chose the wrong one. The gamble didn't pay off. And a bomb plan now for Sergey to pull off a 1v3 ain't looking all too likely. What? Ents cannot afford to be losing these rounds on the CT side of Nuke, man. It's just keeping them on the back foot at all times. They're not getting a chance to build up any money. And trading back and forth is always going to be something that Dignitas on the T side here are like, yeah, okay, we're fine with that. We're, we're going to be getting more than enough rounds in order to be happy with our T side if this is how the trend continues. And obviously, having won this round now, it gives them the chance to maybe even start getting back into just winning ways and start chaining those rounds together like we've seen in the beginning from them. Especially if they win this next one. With the save, at least, we'll see a drop coming over from Sergey. We can see Alu buy for himself with the Yop as well. Preferably, though, I think we would like to see him drop a rifle over. Although X, yeah, I mean, I think they can manage without him dropping one, I believe. Nah, never mind, not quite. So it, it is a little bit of an awkward spot. If they want to pull out the op, then it would be limiting them slightly. But they've managed it. Maybe lacking a couple nades, but overall, it's actually a really good buy. So just don't listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I was I was doing some maths wrong somewhere. Still not sure exactly which one I was, I was looking at wrong. I thought Ali wouldn't have enough to drop the rifle and still get the op and everything he needed. But I was wrong. He, then again, having the A1S on definitely helps out, yeah. Oh, just under cut off with a spray from up above. Ariel doing a lot of damage. Sergey down on the site catches him out the door. And Dignitas, somehow, they can win force buys. They can't win rifle rounds. And bounce back immediately. This would have been huge. If Dignitas won it, they're up on eight. But now halzerg has got to pull off a 1v3. A 4k clutch. He's been watched from just about every angle. He might have an opportunity if he can get out and face main, but he's looking the wrong way. Alu takes him down on the off, and that is the end of the round. Six to six, tied up. Now, anything from this point is a bonus for Dignitas. 
you have to remember like if they manage to find themselves on seven that's great they're gonna be happy but considering how many opportunities they've had to push ants all the way back to build up some rounds and ants just keep on bouncing back and denying them whenever they get those rifles out we could definitely see a nine to six and i think with that dignitas will know although that's decent and workable we could have had a little bit more to, to use the fast a push definitely not the play in the previous round anyways so this time they go outside but you'll notice a bit of a difference with the molly going down they want to avoid uh, being caught down into a close play from sony but at the same time when their smoke comes through it leaves a massive gap and the other one was thrown too deep they're really not having a good time on their executes at the moment Freiburg actually still made it across. He was spotted, I believe, but was able to do so with the flash at the play exists, was then ready to peek up close alongside Freiburg to get rid of that main player. But they're struggling to deal with the crossfire between vents and up on the rafters, and unfortunately, they will not be able to trade back successfully. Sergey manages to come up with actually three kills for himself right there. Making a fairly convincing round from Ents. And yeah, as you said, that smoke was a little bit awkward towards outside. They were looking to go towards A the entire time, time anyway. But the main issue would have been, obviously, that they only spotted Freiburg then cross. And so they had a good idea that they really didn't need to put too much focus around that lower half of the map. Because it was only one player. So at most, rotate one down to keep an eye on it. And with that, they still had themselves set up for once that A push came in. I can't help but wonder if maybe... Just maybe that was intentional. Throwing the smoke, leaving the gap so Freiburg could jump across, bait the shots, and then the player up close swing through and take the kill. Very risky, if it was. But I feel like, yeah, they've missed that one smoke on outside twice. That one right there, though, I mean, the fact, the chances of Dignitas not knowing how to throw their two smokes outside, especially when they've got a molly down as well, like, I don't know. I feel like they do. And then the, the fact even further that Freiburg did cross, that's what kind of confused me the most. It's fair enough if you miss if you mess them up. I expect him to fall back. Maybe call for another smoke if they had one. I didn't check at the time if they did. But the fact that he then just ran across like that seemed like he was definitely trying to bait the shots out. Ooh, nice control by Alu. Initially, he tried to fall back. Did have help with injured events, so he was hoping it would get there in time. Didn't quite to save his life, but it does to return the kills fairly quickly. And also with the player already on the bomb site being sunny. No bomb plant going to be allowed there for Dig. Already having six, though, on the T side is not a bad result. I think ideally, though, they do want to try and add at least one more to the... And one thing worth noting right now is Halzerk, a man who we normally expect to be up there towards the top of the scoreboard for Dignitas. Unfortunately, he isn't having a great game. To be fair, though, the T side of Nuke, not always a position where you can get that op working too successfully, especially with how kind of scrappy and back and forth it's been for Dignitas. They haven't always had the money for it. So I do hope he'll find a little bit more success on the CT side. But Dignitas, they still have a chance to try and actually bring this up to seven. A seven would be a happy little scoreline for them if they can make it. That's still in question. As we move on through and ends of their AWP on Alu, it's been having a lot of impact so far, but the utility is starting to wane a lot. X7, one of the players who has literally nothing. Normally he'd drop a molly, but instead he's just being pushed down blitzed on. And up close, he finds one still with the A1, but traded out immediately the B site now under heavy threat as Sunny opens the double doors to make another angle they have to worry about. Halzik doesn't look all too worried to me. He's just gonna pop that bomb down in the open, or at least he was for a second. Yeah, he follows through on it afterwards. The CTs now with a difficult enough retake. They've lost this versus CZs and Tech Nines. Now there's AKs in the hands of Dignitas. Halter tried to get aggressive, unfortunately didn't really work out for him, ends up going down. Still a 2 on 3, as you said, though definitely winnable with all these CTs moving in from ramp as well. Exist continuing to take that fight, slows down their ability to move back in because they have to be caught from the window. You see actually Sergei going in to go ahead and clear out that position. Will find Exist and get right, hoping he could swing out and just find the one on one. It, it doesn't work for him, unfortunately. Sergei was already back in to peek alongside Alu, so they will go down. The defuse plenty of time because they do have those kits of course and with that Ensire able to come out with a 9-6 to six score line at the half pretty good considering they went down 4-0 at one point so uh, I think they'll definitely be happy with how they recovered the half Dignitas overall six rounds is decent but they would have liked a little bit more will they be able to make that work though we are of course gonna have to wait a few minutes guys we'll find out after the break Sitting on a 
bench Waiting for the time to pass Dreaming of what happens next I see what I wanna be Questioning my destiny Only knowing what I see I don't even realize I've already made a path And I can change it anytime I can, can't take it back I know what I want But it seems so damn far away No, I can't remember the last time that I really f- Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Ends taking on Dignitas. We are here for half number two. We've removed the flags to get rid of the problem. Thank you for pointing it out in the chat that Halzerk is apparently Swedish, according to what we had. But no, it's, it's all good now. We got it fixed up. Nine to six. Close little game so far. Dignitas with a decent T side, but they actually won more four spies than they did actual rifle rounds. If they even won a rifle round. This time, the pistol, which you'd imagine with those stats, Dignus has to be quite good at, starts out poorly. Ali with a nice opening kill, but that nade does so much damage. Yeah, damn. I mean, three players are barely hanging on to life right now because of the nade coming in. I mean, get right at least being low over on the other side, but Dignus has looking pretty good as this push comes in. The issue is being surrounded exists, couldn't do anything. It was Sergei who got the frag. Alu trying to keep the control towards the single door will actually fall to the quick rotation from Halzerk, which wasn't really expected. But now it's the three on three retake. Quick headshot being connected by Get Right. It's Ariel who falls. Sergei up close. They do actually go ahead and clear it, but he manages to spin around and get the second. Halzerk falls. Low health on Get Right, but he's not actually able to connect the bullet he needed. And now it's a one on one. Not knowing where Sunny is is the main issue that Get Right has at the moment. The smoke and play does also have a defuse kit, but being so low on health, it's going to be tough to stick to Sunny if he spams away. Only needs one, and there it is. Get Right was trying to spin around and see if he could avoid them as well, but it doesn't work out. Ents are able to go ahead and find that second pistol round, and with that, bringing themselves up 10 to 6. And again, this is the map choice of Dignitas, so this is beginning to look a little bit scary now for them because they had such a great start going up 4 0, and since then have really struggled. 
Yeah, most certainly. They were up 4-0. They won two four spies, and that was it. That's literally the end of the story. Not a single rifle round on the board. When it came down to having full eight gates to their executes, they were fast rushing at A. No success. Long control, or outside control. No success. I don't think they even prodded ramp that much. The Serg A opens it up onto Freiburg as well, just to further add insult to injury. Although Sonny is being lit down low, he's a man with a Mac 10. With that, you expect him to be taking a lot of damage and making it all the way down the vents towards that B bomb site. Certainly an advantage to play with. Zarks, you're on the observing. Is there any of you with a condition, epilepsy? We're, we apologize. He's flicking around. <laughs> I actually used to. Yeah, I know. I, you told me that in a very disturbed... We were just walking along the street and you were like, yeah, I might have a seizure and collapse at some point. What? what? <laughs> what? I need some I briefing. I said that as a joke. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you you didn't. It was in Budapest like two and a half years ago. And oh, I, that, was, that was a good time. It was a genuine like, warning you were giving me. Like, I'm. you might need to just... I was like, what do I do? You're like, yeah, just turn me on my side. And I'm like, why are you not freaking out? <laughs> uh, we're all good. <laughs> yeah, the A-bomb site's open, okay. though. So it has just been claimed. A ramp stack? That was an interesting approach. I mean, once they lost the opening player, though, there wasn't really much they could do if they just continued split up on in default positions with a scout, some pistols, and a UMP. So it made sense to take a gamble. Unfortunately, just not really doing so towards the correct position. That's it. When these things happen, you go for this kind of a save. Kind of a save. I mean, it, but it is a save, isn't it? Not a kind of one. But you want to take those weapons through to the next round and then fight right there. Maybe you stack up another part of the map and hope they run into uh -oh. you. And maybe you find some exits. These players starting to make their way over and on full HP and one shot from the scout. Ah, Ariel surviving that. I didn't notice they swapped the MAC-10, so I thought that was Sunny on his way over. But I thought the CZ would shred him. They're still going forward. Alu's got an AK and that was a very risky move. But they do survive with the brunt of their weapons. The Galil, the AK-47s carried through to this one. A MAC-10 bought up for Sunny. He'll be leading the charge the man jumping around corners, getting up in their face. An X7, obviously, on the Galil. It's a decent buy. It gives them some future proofing. They haven't wasted all their money here either. I think overall this is a pretty solid investment. Dignitas, on the other hand, well, their investment is anything but solid. For them, even finding two kills isn't going to be fantastic. I mean, any kill is going to be great in a round like this. But it's not going to be great because Ents will still have that backup money. And good foresight from Ents as well. To drop the Molotov down in the vents just to make sure no one follows them. As you can see, there was a hot pursuit coming through from Get Right. And now just gives up on that. And again, it's going to be B site control unless Exist has got high caliber bullets in that USP. I don't believe he does, but I mean, if they don't clear it, yeah, Sonny's jumped above them. So Exist is like, okay, they've overlooked me. Maybe I have the opportunity to. Oh, no, no, never mind. Ariel pops up, checking it. They were like, oh, hang on, have we actually cleared this corner? Ariel realizes, fortunately. Forrest ends up getting one kill, though, on Sunny. Taken low. Will they be able to retrieve the weapon? Not quite sure. I'm actually going to have a look over in Nan. It, it doesn't seem like there's really going to be anything taken out of this one, sadly, for them. Saving over again, I guess. The Kevlar definitely can help out. Get right, could stick with the UMP in this next round. A Mac 10 as well, I guess, also could be helpful since the nades aren't going to be the best. But, um, Get right falls. That's one of the players with Kevlar already taken out, sadly. I guess trying to do a bit of extra damage as well. It's, it's not like they can't afford to buy in this next round, so it's not the end of the world if they lose what they have. More so just wanting Forrest and Kevlar, most likely, and perhaps the Mac-10 and Flash. But yeah, Freiburg, he was willing to hunt, and he almost managed to catch them in time. Just a little bit too far there on the range. 12-6, to 6, and off the back of that pistol, have gone ahead and got themselves into a fairly comfortable position. This is where you, you really get to see now if Dignitas are going to have anything to show us on the CT side. They need to pick up this open and gun round. Otherwise, it could potentially be a little bit too a little bit too late by the time they actually are able to get the guns out once again. And moving into this, we have... Whoopsie daisies. Hello. Get right taken down immediately. They nade the door and just swing on the peak. We've seen them do that on the CT side, but... The confidence to keep it rolling. They don't want to give Dignitas a moment to breathe. What I was going to say is we didn't have a lot of faith in Ents coming into this map in particular. We said it should be a, a fairly clean cut one for one trade and we go to overpass then to close it out. But in fact, Ents are now looking a whole lot better than we expected. Their CT side minus the four spies they lost when it came to actual buy rounds it was fantastic. So far, their T-side is being clean and clinical. They're not making a whole lot of mistakes. Alu is just out fragging by himself. And although Exist picks up one and drops the bomb, 
they leave. Uh -oh. they, they run away. What, what's up with that? I thought they were going to pressure him immediately, but instead, I don't think they realized the bomb was down out there. Now they've got nades in their hand. What is this? Clean and clinical, I said. I, I might take that back. But uh, look, Alu's just killing everyone. The dude has no support. He's standing in doorway, and everyone's just peeking into him. <laughs> Losing every single duel. Damn, okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they tried to give Exist the best opportunity they could <laughs> there for Dignitas to claw their way back into the round. Like, But um, that was strange. I don't know, the bomb out on its own ended up getting left there. As you said, mustn't have realized it was dropped for a moment. They started moving back in. Hoped that they could use their, their smokes and such to hold off the rotations coming in through hell, but got caught and gave over a second kill with that. Good returns, though, in the end. As you said, Alu was pretty much unstoppable there, taking out three, giving them the A bomb site as well off the back of it. And with that, the round. And as I mentioned now, by the time Dignitas get back onto another full buy, it's very likely going to be 14 to 6, and they're going to have to have a flawless CT side if they're looking to get that win here in regulation. So it's a tough spot to be in. The op likely to be saved, at least that is one positive. But even off the back of this, I mean, only then could Halzer drop over one rifle. Freiburg would be able to buy for himself. Forrest could pull together a buy as well. So I think they probably are going to go for this, but it's not too great. Again, will be quite a few weaknesses if they do want to. But I think they might have to make it work, if I'm being honest, in this position. They, yeah, the, the pause coming. Oh, it's actually a technical pause coming through from Freiburg. Halzer, team speak has died. Fair enough. Maybe he needs to be on the Swedish server. That could be it. Lag. But 13 to 6. Yeah, this is phenomenal. I mean, even that round there, there were so many mistakes made and Dignitas can't capitalize on it. Ents literally had Alu. Like, they went for ramp control. Alu was sat there in the door, just holding it. Immediately, start of the round, nade goes down, door open, Alu's got a kill. Okay, that's acceptable. It happens. Dignitas even had an SMG that they upgraded then. Everything's fine. They face again. They lose the fight. Down on ramp, there's a duel. And in the meantime, Alu's just recovering every single mistake they make. They lose the bomb. Alu's opened up A completely. He's got the site all to himself. And it was a save as soon as they took down Existence. We needed to see so much more from Dignitas existence. in that one. Or Exist. Like, not Existence. He's not playing. <laughs> that's, a, not this time. that's a big throwback, man. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Just, I guess, seeing this car on the server. <laughs> making you have flashbacks think you're in a whole different year. Yeah, yeah. A whole different era. Yeah. It, it, that's, it's been a while, but um, yeah, Dignitas, they decided against the buy. Not the uh, not the worst decision. It definitely does give them a much better investment in the following round to start trying to build their way back in. But as I said, at that point, they're going to have pretty much no room for mistakes to be made. In, unless at that point, the best thing they want to do is play for an overtime. And sadly, already losing the player here early in this round. It was Forrest who went down. Halzerk, though, with the off, he's able to pick up one. Sonny getting dropped as he was, I believe, trying to peek in through main. And Freiburg following up with that aggression. It was actually towards Dor. Freiburg then allowed to actually get aggressive through but catches one player with his shotgun, trades out to the AK, and finds X7 working his way back in from ramp. Suddenly it's just Alu and Ariel to try and save this round. One thing that is a little bit of a positive is that they may not think Alu has gotten himself into this position in heaven, but having the control in around lobby, having the bomb for themselves as well, they've already given up that A bomb site. They don't really care anymore. So if Alu had have wanted to have continued on, that way he'd have to drop down and likely make nice in doing so so he decided to try and wrap back instead over towards ramp he walks into the crosshair the op aerial i was gonna say should go down to freiburg but no he hits a quick headshot and maybe there's a chance if he gets the kill on halzerk then the two remaining players are low yeah clutching at straws there though really having to make that comeback as seven rounds go on the board for dignitas but ends they're not worried at all they've got so much cash in the bank it's all going to go into rifles, into utility, into everything they could possibly want. A little bit of armor, a couple helmets, why not? Dignitas, they're not in a great position. Uh, they have at least built up some money on some players, but considering where they're at, they cannot afford to lose a round before they're up on double digits and nice and close to ends. If they win one here, it will be nine on the board, and they'll close the gap in quite quickly. They've got to make it happen soon. Nades, quite good. Forrest dropping from Molotov to Molotov. Actually, the door just about safe. The only spot he could stand in without being burned alive. Good job as well, because he was blind. <laughs> he walked off the door by accident. I think he'd probably be dead. Yeah, quite possibly. I think there was a player ready in Hut as well, trying to actually hold for anyone who may have been forced out of position. Or at the very least, there was also the Molotov, of course, down on the floor that... I believe it had been thrown in by his teammate, so that might have done even further damage. 
But yeah, this is a very important round. As you said, Dignitas, they can't afford to drop one for at least a few. They, they need to start chaining, chaining some together here, really start picking up some momentum before they can afford to actually let one slip. And of course, also building up the bank alongside that. But a slower round overall. I mean, a lot of knives, a lot of presence haven't been shown around this lobby area. They were spamming away. They were using lots of nades. Only now, though, are, are we really going to see Ents actually making a move forward anywhere. And it is towards outside. The smokes are going down. With that, they'll give themselves the ability to cross over the secret. Will they follow up on it, though, is the question. It does seem like they may. X7's gotten himself a kill already on towards Halzerk and given them a, a nice little advantage now. But yeah, not going towards secret. This is what I was thinking. Because they had the two players in lobby, instead going to set themselves to split up in true main. There's still a couple of players towards this bomb site that can hold it down. That Molotov certainly complicates things, forces one out into the open, and doing the same to Freiburg as Ariel gets all three. Get right down in the vents, can't do anything about this anymore. Well, that happened. Ariel, what an animal. Going in, getting all three kills, leaving. I mean, we swap from CT to CT and just every time. Oh, that guy's dead. Let's dead. swip. Oh, he, oh, he's dead. Swap, swap again? No, he's dead. Nothing that could happen. I mean, Ariel just doming people and get right by himself down below, just shivering, scared and alone, wondering where his friends went. How the world could be so cruel. 14 on the board for Ents. Guaranteed, unless Get Right's got instant defuse and no clip. I feel like I haven't checked the rules, Dean. Um, but maybe you can clarify, but I don't think it's allowed. I don't believe that. I don't. I don't believe so. I don't. <laughs> He said, I don't believe it. I thought he was actually on his way up. <laughs> Fading through the floor. He's like, oh, <laughs> I don't believe it either. A 14 to 7. <laughs> this is insane for men's. Just, just a quick buy in. That's all he addressed. <laughs> it just TPs you to the bomb. Easy. This is this is shocking, though. We said coming into the series, the VO actually went quite well for Dignitas. And Nuke was one of those maps we were looking at. As, yeah, this is a good pick for them. But no, Ents are on fire right now. And having Alu show up on the op seems to be something that they require when they want to win. I was going to say normally Sergei as well, but right now you have Ariel and Sergei also fragging alongside him. And it just seems to be unstoppable, unfortunately, for Dignitas. Already X7 has made his way down the vent. Took a small bit of damage from the Molotov, but in order to actually get that control and at this point just be a massive nuisance to Dignitas, it is worthwhile. They forced the rotations, but Halzerk been able to find that one kill towards outside does make things a little bit more complicated for ends. Definitely slows them down. Yeah, they definitely would have liked to trade back there. You saw Alu try to get it, but Halzerk was already out of there, fading into Woods Heaven. At this point, ends have got their options open, but it certainly does look like we're looking at a late A hit with the positions they're currently in. Dignitas don't have to really get overly aggressive. They can just chill out. Their utility is very low. Get right's the only one with a molly currently. So if there is a faster play, Ents are unlikely to really be punished for it. And X7 looking towards the top events. They've got outside control now. Player behind red. So we might actually be shifting focus a little bit. Then Sergey might be heading down ramp by himself. So you're actually spreading out a lot. That can cause some serious problems. They know they've got secret maybe it's a late hit from Sergey, or just the push up towards the a site still possible but i don't really see alu's role in that then I'm not spamming the further back angle so they may not expect get right yeah he's still in a good position actually catches the bomb trying to cross out transfers down on the x7 and then something exists to get that kill instead sergey left lurking up on the upper bomb site alongside Alu, who was outside with no time at all. They're just forced to fall back away and save. So Dignitas will get themselves another round. Bringing up the eight now. Trading back, but it's still a pretty long road ahead of them, ahead of them if they actually want to make this comeback a reality. Again, with those weapons being saved also, Ents can manage to get the bio quite easily. So they're not going to be struggling in this one. So Dignitas do need to actually continue chaining these rounds together. Back on everything they could really ask for in the buy though. Kits on everyone, nades as well, plentiful across the board. The op obviously still available for Halzer. If they can pick this one up, then they would actually also run down the economy events and force them onto an, e onto an eco. And at that point then, begin to actually close in this gap a little bit. Bring it up to 10. At that point, it's looking certainly a little bit more achievable. Oh, quicker outside control though going to be coming in this time around from ends. Not really... Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, they've got the players actually on the other side of red as well, so it's definitely towards the A side that they want to go. We see it every time from Ents. If they're going to go down secret, they're not going left side red. Indeed, most teams follow the same formula. Alzerk's got the op and he's giving away his spot. 
Breitberg with another kill though, and that really pulls it back. They've got only the players down towards hell. And they're even being spotted out. It's just with a good swing, traded out. They know Halsericks in spawn, but outside of that, there's no information to play with. Gary should have killed on X7 as well. No, never mind. X7 reacts. I was going to say, not really using their smoke swords outside there with that push. It did definitely give Halzerk the opportunity with the, the op, obviously, to drop the bomb. So it was an interesting approach. And at this moment, he does still have it locked down, at least in his vision. Alu in towards the garage. And X7 is the one who's creeping forward slowly, trying to see if he can actually retrieve that bomb. And there you go. The flash goes in at least. It will give a little bit of room. The nade going over. Could connect some damage a small bit. But nothing really too substantial. And with Freiburg actually flanking around from outside, Alu's being eliminated. So now it's all on X7. Obviously, knowing that he is pushed up around this area, Forrest just comes in and finishes it off. And there it is. Nine for Dignitas. Yeah, I mean, they had lots of nades there. They had plenty. They didn't really use them too efficiently. Sure, they put one down, I think, to try and let them get in towards main. But they also had players who were looking to cross over towards the garage, towards credit card. And while doing so, obviously, they had no cover. Halzerk was able to catch one with the bomb. Yeah, and then leaving exist unchecked. I mean, everything just got slowed down because Hulzerk was able to get that kill and fade out without being traded, and obviously no one was in, in a spot to do so. That's been two strategies from Ants that didn't work out even close to as planned. Hulzerk manages to fall. Oh, no. Stuck on the vents. So this will make it down, but get right there to be dealt with, and without the immediate third player coming out, get right gets a nice safe reload. The new aerial was still down towards the vents as he... Just about being spotted on his way down. Dignitas 10 on the board. Built up good economy as well. So Ents won't be able to put them onto an eco. And this is where the T-side need to take a little bit of time to think about how they're going to invest into this. More importantly, how they're going to use their investments. Because Dignitas, Dignitas excuse me, are starting to really close in that gap. <laughs> that <was laughs> not, not as bad as fast play, mate. You'll, uh, you'll never beat that. Uh, that, was, that was great, though. That, that was still great. I don't know if everyone else caught that exactly what you said, but <laughs> I liked it. Um, <laughs> it's a bit insulting to them, maybe. They are starting to pick it up. <laughs> Looking a little bit better now on the CT side, for sure, over these past few rounds. But yeah, as you said, Ents were still able to manage to actually scrape out a buy here. Not ideal. They don't have the op on Alu. They're a lot more limited on the nades, so they're not really going to be going for outside control, at least not in the beginning of the round. Wait in a moment first, and then throwing out what smokes they do have available. Sunny though still in towards the lobby again. It looks like they will be just setting themselves up for the split. But Halzerk a little bit more aggressive this time around. Garage able to catch Ariel as he steps out. And with him seeing that he was trying to get up closer to the garage, that could give them a little bit of a, a signal that it most likely is coming towards A. You can see even Forrest has positioned himself now to watch that main wrap, just in case anyone does come in. Down the vents yet again. I mean, they're always making it through. Sonny gets the fight on to get right down below, and Dignitas in a little bit of trouble. As Forrest falls as well, they all just start barreling down. It looks like we're going to be seeing a B hit. Exist is the one that has to pull it through, and will he remain in existence? Will he fall? Well, Halzerk's here to watch the single door, so Exist knows they're down below him, if anywhere. Moving up towards the window, double peaked. The op, the one to find that kill. And only now are Sergei and Alu, who've consistently, whenever they've taken secret control, been so far behind the team, only now do they start to move down. That means that they don't have very much of a fallback. Both players are here, bomb in the open, but they know Halzerk's got an op. They just need to peek him together. 15 seconds, he finds one. Halzerk knows there's a player below him, and what a shot! A 4K from Halzerk! And the round win for Dignitas. They survive a little bit longer and push Ants down to an eco. Damn, what a round. Halzerk, I said that back on the T side, he was struggling to get going in form. He was on like 3 and 11 at one point. He was never really able to get the oppo. He never had the money to, to get it going just because the rounds were always so close back in that first half. But once he's got it into play here on the CT side, he has stepped up massively, he's sitting at 16 now. And of course, a massive quad kill in that round there to keep Dignitas in a great position where Ents again stuck with the half fight as a chance for a 12th round here to be put on the board for Dignitas. And at that point, of course, make it a, a pretty close position. Could be only one gun round separating him. Halzer gets caught. X7 just straight through the Molotov. Did not care. Not going to be living too much longer. Neither is Ariel as he comes in to try and support. But they have got the bomb down on B. So some success at least been found. But it doesn't look like it's going to lead to the round win, sadly. Yeah, I was holding close in vents, but he's so low. Nice shot by Sergey. Makes it a little bit more doable to flash over. Peeking around, doesn't see anyone here, but Forrest was up above. Tagged. Headshot, in fact. As Alu is taken down, they know exactly where Sergey is, and there's no way he gets away with that. 
Dignitas on 12, but a good bomb plan for Ents. Still, you would have liked to see them get a little bit more out of it. Do some more damage to the Dignitas side. His money is just so damn high right now. But realistically, Ents would need to find like four kills in the last two rounds. These rounds to put Dignitas to a position where maybe they'd be on a weaker spot. I think, as I said before, it's 90, 95% of the time we're going to see Dignitas buying every round from now on until the end. And a timeout through from Ants, and it's very importantly timed as well. You know, this is one of their last buy rounds before not only could they potentially be facing into an overtime, but they could face a loss on this map after such a heavy lead. Potentially. We were pointing out that it would have put Ants in a fantastic position then moving on to train to try and actually finish the series 2-0. But Dignitas are making the comeback look like it could be a reality. This gun round, obviously, for Ents is going to be really strong. No op coming into play. Not too surprising. I mean, it is the T side of Nuke. You don't really need it. But they have all the utility this time around. Nothing really lacking. So they'll give themselves whatever options, really, that they want. But this is this is it. I mean, if they if they weren't to at least get a bomb plant then in this one, they could be struggling a bit in the next round, at least onto one or two of the players. Thankfully, with some money left over and the loss bonus, they'd still be able to scrape something together. But it's not a position they want to be leaving themselves in. But moving a little bit quicker this time. Going straight for the outside control and been able to find Secret quite easily as well. Three players now setting up towards the door. Not sure if they were going to look maybe to try and split down into the vents quickly. But that smoke in play now is definitely going to slow things down. And Halzerk finds Alu trying to creep around main from the outside. That's a, an advantage again going over towards, uh, towards Dignitas alongside a bit of nade damage being connected. It's what they need realistically. But they have lost map control for it. Rating out the player for observation room control. But Dignitas have been playing super passive down here. You don't see them contest in secret pretty much at all. Very unusual, not only just because of what Ants were doing, but just because of in general how teams play in secret. Even Vents is not a point of contention for them. They constantly allow Ants down there and look to fight later on. Either get right or exist on the side or up around the rafters. At this point though, Ariel has faked out a little bit of control and now he's on the rotate back up through Vents to help out his team it looked like for a second especially with the pressure they were applying to a but that's exactly what they're trying to sell dignitas on as they now move into the ramp but halzerk he's not pushed back the molly he goes forward on it loses a lot of health in the process and exists falls now get rights alone down on b to hold it and being in single with the door closed as well he's probably not going to be trying to fight the bomb site itself too aggressively. Bomb now got planted, so okay, he just actually just swing out. There was a player up on the rafters, and he may not expect a quick vent flank to be coming in as well, so unfortunately, he will fall after the one, but Freiburg allowed to get the first trade. Not able to quite see the body there of Sunny either way. Could only see, I believe, the gun on the back a little bit. That nade had done a lot of damage, though, and he manages to get the headshot to finish off Sunny. That was perfect. The nade stopped Sunny from being able to peek for a moment. They gave him the chance to get the one-on-one, -on -one. and because he won it out so quickly, he even has time to go and try and retrieve the AWP, which he will find. What a round by Freiburg, coming out with three kills in total. A one on three, I believe, because Get Right went down, and then he got that trade, of course, in towards single. And yeah, that was absolutely phenomenal. Giving me some some flashbacks to the, the good old Freiburg. 22 kills on the board, having a hell of a game. Right there, pulling them right up into positive. And Funny they even had time to go shopping at the end as well. And it's going to be gutted that they lost that one. I love as well the position from Get Right. I completely agreed with you when he's in single door. Like, hey, he's probably not going to go aggressively out. And as soon as you say that, just swings through the door. I figured someone would be watching the door. I'm like, okay, it's closed. So he has to open it. Someone's yeah. probably going to be watching it. There's probably not a lot he can do. But no one was spotting it. There was a player up on the rafters, but I think he was looking at double. Especially because they know Get Right has been the one playing B. They've taken contact onto him and Exist multiple times. And taking Exist down a ramp and having early control. Oh my god, Freiburg, what is this? First the 1v3, now the spray transfer down to X7. The 2v4, all oh, red, there's dual Berettas coming out, of course there are. Dignitas, we're walking all over them. Sonny shot a corpse. You gotta make sure, double tap, make sure he's dead. That's how much just Dignitas are in him right now. <laughs> That's how much Freiburg is scaring him. <laughs> just even when he's dead, keep shooting him, just in case. Oh. That's a risky peek by Gatray. Especially since he had his teammate right beside him. I figured they both would have peaked it if anything. But it works out. 14 to 14. Dignitas, they actually managed to tie up the score, which was not looking very likely at one point. What has it been now? Seven rounds in a row? This is crumbling for Ents. And this is only their second timeout. 
I mean, in theory, they could pause for all of these remaining rounds. But the issue is they can't really buy into this one. No bomb plant being allowed. Not having any spare money left over from the investment in the previous round either. It's only two players who can... Well, three players who can buy... Okay, hang on. Two who can buy with a bit of utility. Two who could scrape out the AKs and an Alu who's a little bit short. So, I don't know. It's a tough spot. They likely will go for the investment rather than playing for an overtime as you'd expect. But it's really not that great. And yeah, I mean, it looks like they're actually going to keep some money. So yeah, they've decided against the full investment thinking we can give ourselves a good chance in this round and then have a proper one in the next one at least to try and at least force the overtime. They're like, okay, it is Dignitas's map pick after all. We're not too worried. Oh, uh, if I dropped, can you hear me? I, I can hear you. All I've good. dropped out a GoTV though. You know, we've got the same thing here, actually. It looks oh, like really? the GoTV okay. has crashed. That is not ideal. Let me I throw it over to a bright again. screen then, and we'll, uh, I'll communicate with Horrible the admins and see what's and... happening. A 14 to 14. I guess we're just throwing in some suspense. Well, uh, guys, we've got some pretty bad news. F's in the chat. F's all over the chat, please. Sadly, at 14 to 14, the GoTV broke. We don't know why. We don't know how. We're not production people. Uh, but we've been informed that the game has ended. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see it, and neither did you guys. But we can tell you. Dean, do you want to you let the people know who won? Yeah, Dignitas were actually able to make that comeback happen successfully in the end. Did it really happen, though, when we didn't see it? Yeah, it did. 